Ay, la lavadora. The life of an athlete. Es puro lavar. <laughs> Seriously. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to our channel. Yes, I got this right this time, bro. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. My name is Eric. This guy's name is Woody and today's video I'm gonna be talking about how to run with your dog. Yes, he's a four-year-old white Labrador retriever. This guy has absolutely changed my life and if you're considering getting a dog or you already have a dog, I'm gonna give you some helpful tips on how to run with your dog. Disclaimer, I'm no dog whisperer, I'm no dog trainer, but I will teach you a few tips that I've actually incorporated in my life with Woody that have drastically changed our running game. So with that being said, let's get right into it. So tip number one, buy a waist leash. I can't express how helpful this has been. I'll have a link down below. This is through Stunt Puppy. What I love about this is he just snap it on and that's it. You could adjust it and it's attached to this. So everything can be separated, to be honest. There's three pieces and when you combine them, it's absolutely perfect. You just snap it on. This is a reflector. So when we're running at night, it reflects and it's waterproof. I love this because if it gets wet, it doesn't get damaged. This is not waterproof. This right here helps. So when he's running a little fast, it doesn't abruptly pull me. So this is awesome. This has helped us out a lot. And now you're able to use both of your hands. If you're taking a selfie, if you're picking your nose or whatever the case is, uh, you could use both of your hands if you have this. The only time I really use it is during training. So when me and Woody are out on the track, that's the only time I use this. I don't ever have Woody wear a collar at the apartment or anywhere else. For me, that's my personal preference. I like for Woody to feel free. I don't ever want to make Woody feel like he's locked in. And that was another thing that I should add. I want Woody to be free and this is just the tool to train. That's it. The only time he wears this is if we're going out for a walk if we're going out and train and that's pretty much it. But other than that, I would highly recommend for you guys to grab this because it will facilitate your run so much more. Tip number two, invest time with your dog. This is the most important part about this video because you're setting up your dog for success. If you don't have a dog, I would highly recommend you get a two month old or a three month old dog. That way you teach them the habits and the protocol, especially for running. Luckily, I had Woody when he was two months old. He grew up with me. We spent more time as time passed. And now he's able to understand the habits and protocols completely. So if you have 30 minutes, even up to an hour to squeeze in to go to a dog park, do so because this will be very helpful for your dog not to run away because I know there's a lot of people that say, well, if I take him out, he's just going to run out. Yes, because you don't invest time with them. You don't go hang out with them. You, you don't go do trails. You don't take them out to a dog park. You don't go walk him. You just keep them at home. And that's not going to help you out a, a whole lot because dogs are meant to be free. Yes, we want to keep them at home, keep them safe when we're working when we're outside. But when I got Woody, I made it my mission for myself to say, I don't want him to live at a house. I want him to live outside, spend as much time outside as possible. And I've actually lived up to my promise. So spend time with your dog because this will set your dog for success. All right, tip number three, off leash. I'm sure most of you guys don't trust your dog without a leash. I, in my case, trust Woody without a leash. He could go out, roam around, but like I said, it's the investment part. It's the time. And I feel for running, it's very important to keep your dog off leash, especially during trail runs. For me, that is by law. I gotta keep Woody 
without a leash. He knows what distance to keep. If he doesn't see me, I don't see him. Obviously, he'll wait for me or vice versa. I'll call him. And I think that's a very important role with running with your dog. So if you can't trust your dog without a leash, you need to spend more time in scouting a location that it's fenced like a park. A baseball park is perfect. Dog parks, I would not recommend just because there's dogs. And trust me, they're going to go wild. They're not even going to listen to you. But I've actually trained Woody to listen to me when there's dogs. When he gets a little too carried away, I call him. He'll come over to me. And like I said, you just have to make that investment in order for you to trust your dog off leash. All right, tip number four, long runs. How do I manage my long runs? Well, it depends how far I'm going or the location I'm headed to. So for this instance, when I go to my regular track, it's literally five minutes away. I don't pack water. I don't pack myself water or food, whatever the case is, because it's just five minutes away. We have a nice little an hour to an hour and a half workout. We come back and food is served, water is served. And then obviously I take care of myself, but it's a little different when I go trail running. When I go trail running, I always make sure that I try to visit the location prior to going because the one like the M mountain that I go to, they have water for dogs. So it's a lot more convenient. So you also have to make sure you pay close attention to the weather. When it's hot, concrete is hot. The sand, the dirt is very hot. If you take them to the beach, if you take them to trails, that is very dangerous for your dog's paws. So you have to be very conscious in taking your dogs either early in the morning or late at night, which when it's summer, that's exactly what I do. I go out early in the morning, we get our workout together, and he doesn't have to worry about burning his paws. Dogs don't have the same temperature regulations like we do. We, we obviously sweat so our body temperature can regulate. They don't have that mechanism. The only way they're able to regulate their temperature is through panting, through breathing through their mouth. That's the only way. They're not able to sweat. You have to pay attention to some of those warning signs. Obviously, when you spend a lot of time with your dog, you would know when they're trying to tell you something or when they're trying to tell you, bro, it's a little too hot. I want to go home or I'm burning my paws, bro. And that's how I manage my long runs. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> All right. Tip number five, calories. I'll sometimes mix half a can of wet food into his dry food and this homie demolishes his three to four cups and it's actually been really really helpful and I always treat him with peanut butter with fruit aside from his wet and dry food and eventually we're gonna work our way up to human food because I've noticed his energy strength and power have gone drastically up and it makes me feel good because we're increasing the miles and he's able to keep up with me but please make sure you're keeping up with his food intake with his vitamins and nutrients with his water intake because they would really need it especially when you start running five miles and up all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I really, really, really appreciate it. If you have any comments, suggestions on the next topic, or if you have questions about what I just talked about, please write it down below. Hit the like button, share this with somebody that is considering getting a dog to run. We're gonna keep powering through. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.